What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And today, we have a red day over here in the cryptocurrency market. We actually have a pretty big red day over there in the U.S. stock market as well, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 500 points as I'm recording this right now. I laugh every single time Ramp Capital posts this GIF whenever we're having one of these days. It's kind of his go-to signature to get the market to reverse back up. Either way, while those people over there in the U.S. stock market are stomaching a 1.5% fall, that's kind of like a normal hour over here in crypto. But either way, moments like this tend to cause panic and worry and concern. I was going back through our correction that we had back there in August, September, and October, and how grueling this time period was down in here. Everybody trying to draw trend lines, trying to figure out how this thing's going to reverse, breaking down from bear flags, all that stuff. And of course, it led into an epic bull run that took place. I went ahead and kind of reset it and structured it to stretch it to fit the screen. You can see these are the exact same structures that took place here on Bitcoin. Same uh, if we want to call it Wyckoff distribution or whatever you want. Stretch it all out, match it all up. We have the same thing going on in here. And it's just a period of uh, boredom, worry, and fear. Yesterday, we spent some time talking about Ethereum Classic, IOTA, SeaCoin, showing what those looked like and how, you know, they, you can go sideways like you did with XRP, or is it going to pull back down in here? That this would have been the bottom, and the bottom is already in but that we're in this like final stage time period of where it really just kind of grinds out for a little while before the market really starts to take off. And we showed multiple examples of that in yesterday's video. Today, no surprise really that, hey, you know what? There's still just in here. And from a technical perspective for today, there's just not a whole lot different to say from beating the same drum that we've beaten over the last several days is that, you know, Bitcoin, you're just consolidating altcoins we're at that final stage right we've already gone in we've hit that bottom taken out that previous low setback in may with a recovery coming back up above that and now we're in that like last period of consolidation i don't know how you argue with this right here and you say nope i mean the only thing you could say is no this time is different i'm not gonna believe that until it happens otherwise i go with the same thing that's gotten me through this entire bear market and then now we're in a bull market right getting me to the bull market has been going with the belief system that this time is not different and it hasn't been until this point so if we're going to show a correction that's extremely similar to what our last correction looked like, I'm going to stick with the same belief that this time is not different. This time we'll recover as well. And if our last one was ridiculously ugly when the bottom came in, well, no surprise, this one's ridiculously ugly as well. But no doubt about it incredibly crazy how unbelievably similar these things are and one key factor that is the same this time as last time again not different exactly the same is how retail investors all believe that the market was going to crumble and crash and it was over you watch the toxicity but either way over here on the stock market red day oh my gosh it's crumbling it's the end of the world obviously not but it is now down 380 so it has recovered a little bit over here on the dow jones but i think really outside of the price action of what's happening today is more of the bigger picture of what's going on in crypto. And I see Jeremy Hogan has now replied to this. He says, I have tried and tried and tried to find something good in this, and I have failed. The SEC must use its full authority to address these risks, and Congress must also step up to close these regulatory gaps. So Senator Elizabeth Warren wrote a letter and made it public that was addressed to Gary Gensler, which is the head of the SEC. As you should know by now, Gary Gensler was appointed, and Gary Gensler has taught college courses and is an expert on cryptocurrency. Not ironic that he becomes the guy in charge of the SEC. But in her letter, here we go from Coindesk, Senator Warren, who has been a long critic of Bitcoin and other crypto, has given the SEC until the end of this month to provide clarity on the U.S. regulator's role in regulating digital assets. Now, I haven't read this article by Coindesk, but I have read the letter from Elizabeth Warren addressed to Gary Gensler. Of course, this is a timed release, right? I'm sure that they've had an opportunity to look at this stuff together, but now it's, you know, made public knowledge now for all of us to see with our clear eyes. And one of the arguments has always been like, look, there's no way that government can stop crypto, right? You can't, you can't stop it. It's here. There's no way around it. But what she's doing in this letter is asking for regulation over the exchanges. So essentially to cut off the on and off ramps for cryptocurrency in the United States. So the most free country in the world. Yeah.
But yeah, here it is. We won't go through the whole thing. We're just going to touch on a few topics here real quick. Uh, from the office you know, of Elizabeth Warren, uh, Dear Chairman Gensler, I write to request information regarding the Security and Exchange Commission's authority to properly regulate cryptocurrency exchanges and to determine if Congress needs to act to ensure that the SEC has the proper authority to close existing gaps in regulation that leave investors and consumers vulnerable to dangers in this highly opaque and volatile market. But yeah, I noticed a lot of the terms that we see here in the crypto market. Here's rug pull, right? So scams have surged into centralized finance platforms in particular, which offer investors higher interest rates and whose developers are often anonymous, making it easy to carry out rug pulls. But in the end, she writes, I ask that you provide a response to the following questions by no later than July 28th, 2021. Do you believe that cryptocurrency exchanges are currently operating in a fair, orderly, and efficient manner? How do the characteristics Characteristics of assets traded on cryptocurrency exchanges differ from those of assets traded on traditional securities exchanges. Describe the extent of the SEC's existing authority to regulate existing cryptocurrency exchanges. In your view, what extent is international coordination needed to address gaps in the regulation of cryptocurrency exchanges and ensure the protection of investors and consumers in the United States? And here we go regarding DeFi. In a recent address, CFTC Commissioner Dan Berkovitz stated, In a pure peer-to-peer -peer DeFi system, there is no intermediary to monitor markets for fraud and manipulation, prevent money laundering, safeguard deposited funds, ensure counterparty performance, or make customers whole when processes fail. A system without intermediaries is a Hobbesian marketplace with each person looking out for themselves and argues that DeFi derivative instruments are likely illegal under the Commodity Exchange Act. And Gary Gensler, do you agree with the Commissioner Berkovitz's assessment of DeFi platforms? Now, Elizabeth Warren has already publicly come out against cryptocurrency, so she's kind of already shown her cards that she's in full-blown attack against this industry in general. Because recently she came out and in a Zoom conference or in a conference that was you know, put, published on the internet, she was just attacking Bitcoin incredibly hard about energy consumption. So now we're going into a new direction. Now we're talking about exchanges. So it makes it very obvious now this is full-blown war coming out of Elizabeth Warren against crypto. But I'm sure I'll be tuning into this guy <laughs> to let me know. But either way, we're watching someone who has been highly critical of cryptocurrency, making moves, releasing letters to the public. I'm pretty sure this is all designed to scare us. I don't have all the answers for what all of this means and what direction it will go in. And again, I think this guy has all the ammo he needs to start creating a video and filling us in on what it all means. But that's been kind of the breaking news happening in cryptocurrency this morning. But I do want to say this because I rarely touch on political topics, but this one's pretty related to, you know, our situation, right? Especially us who talk about XRP on this channel a lot. Gary Gensler, SEC, cryptocurrencies, all that stuff. Elizabeth Warren, Democrat, right? I'm not political. I don't choose either side. I scrutinize both sides tremendously. I don't like either one of them. So please don't ever assume I'm on your side or I'm on the other side. If you happen to have loyalty to one party or one group, I pick apart all of them. And I really don't even bring that onto this channel very often. But this topic is very specific to what we're all talking about. We'll move on from that. Otherwise, not a whole lot to say over here in the cryptocurrency market that we weren't already talking about yesterday. I think the biggest challenge during moments like this right now is just keeping your head up, right? The world is trying to bring you down during these types of time periods, just like they're trying to rise you way up at, at the higher points, right? When the prices are really high, all the retail investors are convinced that, the, that it's all going to the moon. What happened? Retail investors were wrong. Then prices get low. Retail investors become pessimistic and think that the prices are going to go even lower. Lots of toxicity on Twitter. Hey, retail investors as a collective whole have a tendency to be wrong. So that's optimistic. So we just got to get through this time period and keep our heads up. Let the haters hate. I'm just going to shake, shake, shake it off. But all right, all right, we'll get through the day. It looks like Bitcoin is starting to have a little bit of recovery. I think the stock market's pulled up a little bit since I started recording this as well. 
now down only 235 points. So wild morning for sure. It gets hard to record early in the morning like this when there's all the craziness happening in the beginning. You kind of have to like let all the news hit when it's hitting and let the prices kind of stabilize for a minute before you get the recording going. Today was kind of one of those days. Otherwise, nothing's changed since yesterday. Just kind of a slow day over here in the markets. A little bit red, still within range, just kind of boring action. Hopefully tomorrow, feels like we've said that a billion days, but technically it's been 17 that we've been stuck in this range. We can get something more definitive to happen in this market to get us out of this repetitive cycle. But otherwise, my big view picture of this market remains exactly the same as it has been, regardless of whatever's happening today in the market. Still, same vision for the market cap. We've back tested this area after hitting this full extension. We're just in that waiting, waiting, waiting period for us to get this thing rampaging all over again, which I have full faith that it will. But all right, I'll wrap this thing up. A little bit of a red day out there. Everything's still lining up. Try to show you that picture of what our last correction looked like. Still, things are in line with what we talked about yesterday with all the altcoin market. And obviously, some pretty big news that we'll ho hopefully get some more development more and some more explanation on on what's going on with you know Senator Warren uh, calling out to Gary Gensler to provide more clarity and discussions or, for how Congress can act to assist the SEC in regulating exchanges. So that might be a big development. We'll see how that progresses over in the coming days and coming weeks to get that explained a little bit more. And I guess we can look to July 28th for a response from Gary Gensler, a public response for all of us to read. But all right, guys, I'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for something to do, of course, you can check out my website. This is bcbacker.com. It is my course where I've deep dive into the previous Bitcoin bull runs, the different altcoin market cycles, tying them all together to show how the previous alt seasons and bull runs have worked with Bitcoin and with all the altcoins together. I talk about my personal exit plans. I talk about mathematics and percentages. I included an update in here just a few days ago on June 30th right there. It's available to everybody enrolled in the course and anybody who enrolls in the course. But you can get access to all of this content over here on bcbacker.com. You could follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching my channel. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick-me-up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.